The 2008 Mumbai attacks also referred to as 2611s were a group of terrorist attacks that took place in November 2008, when ten members of Lashkar-e-Taiba, an Islamic terrorist organization based in Kashmir, carried out a series of 12 coordinated shooting and bombing attacks lasting four days across Mumbai. The attacks, which drew widespread global condemnation, began on Wednesday 26 November and lasted until Saturday 29 November 2008. At least 174 people died, including nine attackers and more than 300 were wounded. Eight of the attacks occurred in South Mumbai at Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, the Abaroi Trident, the Taj Palace and Tower, Leopold Café, Kama Hospital, the Nariman House Jewish Community Centre, the Metro Cinema, and in a lane behind the Times of India Building and St. Xavier's College. There was also an explosion at Mazagayan, in Mumbai's port area, and in a taxi at Vileparal. By the early morning of 28 November, all sites except for the Taj Hotel had been secured by the Mumbai Police Department and security forces. On 29 November, India's National Security Guards NSG conducted Operation Black Tornado to flush out the remaining attackers. It culminated in the death of the last remaining attackers at the Taj Hotel and ended the attacks. Ajmal Kassab disclosed that the attackers were members of Lashka e Taiba, among others. The government of India said that the attackers came from Pakistan, and their controllers were in Pakistan. On 7 January 2009, Pakistan confirmed the sole surviving perpetrator of the attacks was a Pakistani citizen. On 9 April 2015, the foremost ringleader of the attacks, Zakir Rahman Lakhvi was granted bail against surety bonds of Rs dollars in Pakistan. Background There have been many terrorist attacks in Mumbai since the 13 coordinated bomb explosions that killed 257 people and injured 700 on 12 March 1993. The 1993 attacks were carried out in revenge for earlier religious riots that killed many Muslims. On the 6th of December 2002, a blast in a best bus near Ghatkopar station killed two people and injured 28. The bombing occurred on the 10th anniversary of the demolition of the Babri Mosque in Ayodhya. A bicycle bomb exploded near the Vileparl station in Mumbai, killing one person and injuring 25 on 27 January 2003, a day before the visit of the Prime Minister of India Adil Bihari Vajpayee to the city. On 13 March 2003, a day after the 10th anniversary of the 1993 Bombay bombings, a bomb exploded in a train compartment near the Mullen station, killing 10 people and injuring 70. On 28 July 2003, a blast in a best bus in Ghatkopar killed 4 people and injured 32. On 25 August 2003, two bombs exploded in South Mumbai, one near the Gateway of India and the other at Zaveri Bazaar in Kalbadevi. At least 44 people were killed and 150 injured. On the 11th of July 2006, seven bombs exploded within 11 minutes on the suburban railway in Mumbai, killing 209 people, including 22 foreigners and more than 700 injured. According to the Mumbai police, the bombings were carried out by Lashkar-e-Taiba and Students Islamic Movement of India Simi. Topic Training A group of men, sometimes stated as 24, at other times 26, received training in marine warfare at a remote camp in mountainous Muzaffarabad in Pakistan. Part of the training was reported to have taken place on the Mangla Dam Reservoir in Pakistan. The recruits went through the following stages of training, according to Indian and U.S. media reports. Psychological, indoctrination to Islamist jihadi ideas, including imagery of so-called atrocities suffered by Muslims in India, Chechnya, Palestine and across the globe. Basic combat, Lashkar's basic combat training and methodology course, the Dora AAM. Advanced training, selected to undergo advanced combat training at a camp near Mansara, a course the organization calls the Dora Cause. According to an unnamed source at the U.S. Defense Department this includes advanced weapons and explosives training supervised by retired personnel of the Pakistan Army, along with survival training and further indoctrination. 
Commando training, finally, an even smaller group selected for specialized commando tactics training and marine navigation training given to the Fedayeen unit selected in order to target Mumbai. From the students, ten were hand picked for the Mumbai mission. They also received training in swimming and sailing, besides the use of high end weapons and explosives under the supervision of LET commanders. According to a media report citing an unnamed former Defense Department official of the U.S., the intelligence agencies of the U.S. had determined that former officers from Pakistan's Army and Inter-Services Intelligence Agency assisted actively and continuously in training. They were given blueprints of all the four targets, the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel, Abaroy Trident, Nariman House and Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus. Attacks The first events were detailed around 2000 Indian Standard Time East on 26 November, when ten men in inflatable speedboats came ashore at two locations in Kalaba. They reportedly told local Marathi-speaking fishermen who asked them who they were to mind their own business before they split up and headed two different ways. The fishermen's subsequent report to police department received little response and local police were helpless. Topic: <laughs> Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus. The Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus (CSMT) was attacked by two gunmen, Ismail Khan and Ajmal Kasab. Kasab was later caught alive by the police and identified by eyewitnesses. The attacks began around 21.30 when the two men entered the passenger hall and opened fire using AK-47 rifles. The attackers killed 58 people and injured 104 others, their assault ending at about 22.45. Security forces and emergency services arrived shortly afterwards. Announcements by a railway announcer, Vishnu Dataram Zende, alerted passengers to leave the station and saved scores of lives. The two gunmen fled the scene and fired at pedestrians and police officers in the streets, killing eight police officers. The attackers passed a police station. Knowing that they were outgunned against the heavily armed terrorists, the police officers at the station, instead of confronting the terrorists, decided to switch off the lights and secure the gates. The attackers then headed towards Kama Hospital with an intention to kill patients, but the hospital staff locked all of the patient wards. A team of the Mumbai anti-terrorist squad led by police chief Hemant Karkari searched the Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus and then left in pursuit of Kasab and Khan. Kasab and Khan opened fire on the vehicle in a lane next to the hospital, and received return fire in response. Karkari, Vijay Salaskar, Ashok Kamti and one of their officers were killed. The only survivor, Constable Arun Jadav, was severely wounded. Kasab and Khan seized the police vehicle but later abandoned it and seized a passenger car instead. They then ran into a police roadblock, which had been set up after Jadav radioed for help. A gun battle then ensued in which Khan was killed and Kasab was wounded. After a physical struggle, Kasab was arrested. A police officer, Tukaram Ambal was also killed when he ran in front of Kasab to shoot him. Topic. Leopold Café The Leopold Café, a popular restaurant and bar on Kalaba Causeway in South Mumbai, was one of the first sites to be attacked. Two attackers, Shoaib alias Soheb and Nazir alias Abu Umar, opened fire on the café on the evening of 26 November, killing ten people including some foreigners, and injuring many more. Bomb blasts in taxis There were two explosions in taxis caused by timer bombs. The first one occurred at 22.40 at Vileparl, killing the driver and a passenger. The second explosion took place at Wadi Bundar between 22.20 and 22.25. Three people, including the driver of the taxi were killed, and about 15 others were injured. Topic. Taj Hotel and Abaroy Trident The two hotels, the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel and the Abaroy Trident, were among the four locations targeted. Six explosions were reported at the Taj Hotel, one in the lobby, two in the elevators, three in the restaurant, and one at the Abaroy Trident. 
At the Taj, firefighters rescued 200 hostages from windows using ladders during the first night. CNN initially reported on the morning of 27 November 2008 that the hostage situation at the Taj Hotel had been resolved and quoted the police chief of Maharashtra stating that all hostages were freed, however, it was learned later that day that there were still two attackers holding hostages, including foreigners, in the Taj Hotel. A number of European Parliament Committee on International Trade delegates were staying in the Taj Hotel when it was attacked, but none of them were injured. British Conservative member of the European Parliament MEP Sajad Karim who was in the lobby when attackers initially opened fire there and German Social Democrat MEP Erika Mann were hiding in different parts of the building. Also reported present was Spanish MEP Ignacy Gardens, who was barricaded in a hotel room. Another British Conservative MEP, Syed Kamal, reported that he along with several other MEPs left the hotel and went to a nearby restaurant shortly before the attack. Kamal also reported that Polish MEP Jan Masiel was thought to have been sleeping in his hotel room when the attacks started, but eventually left the hotel safely. Kamal and Gardens reported that a Hungarian MEP's assistant was shot. Also caught up in the shooting were the president of Madrid, Esperanza Aguirre, while checking in at the Aberoi Trident, and Indian MP N. N. Krishnatas of Kerala and Gulam Noon while having dinner at a restaurant in the Taj Hotel. Nariman House Nariman House, a Chabad Lubavitch Jewish center in Kalaba known as the Mumbai Chabad House, was taken over by two attackers and several residents were held hostage. Police evacuated adjacent buildings and exchanged fire with the attackers, wounding one. Local residents were told to stay inside. The attackers threw a grenade into a nearby lane, causing no casualties. NSG commandos arrived from Delhi, and a naval helicopter took an aerial survey. During the first day, nine hostages were rescued from the first floor. The following day, the house was stormed by NSG commandos fast roping from helicopters onto the roof, covered by snipers positioned in nearby buildings. After a long battle, one NSG commando Havildar Gajinder Singh Bisht and both perpetrators were killed. Rabbi Gabriel Holtzberg and his wife Rivka Holtzberg, who was six months pregnant, were murdered with four other hostages inside the house by the attackers. According to radio transmissions picked up by Indian intelligence, the attackers would be told by their handlers in Pakistan that the lives of Jews were worth 50 times those of non Jews. Injuries on some of the bodies indicated that they may have been tortured. NSG raid During the attacks, both hotels were surrounded by Rapid Action Force personnel and Marine Commandos Marcos and National Security Guards NSG commandos. When reports emerged that attackers were receiving television broadcasts, feeds to the hotels were blocked. Security forces stormed both hotels, and all nine attackers were killed by the morning of 29 November. Major Sandeep Unakrishnan of the NSG was killed during the rescue of Commando Sunil Yadav, who was hit in the leg by a bullet during the rescue operations at Taj. Thirty-two hostages were killed at the Aberoi Trident, NSG commandos then took on the Nariman House, and a naval helicopter took an aerial survey. During the first day, nine hostages were rescued from the first floor. The following day, the house was stormed by NSG commandos fast roping from helicopters onto the roof, covered by snipers positioned in nearby buildings. NSG commando Havildar Gajinder Singh Bisht, who was part of the team that fast roped onto Nariman House, died after a long battle in which both perpetrators were also killed. By the morning of November 28, the NSG had secured the Jewish Outreach Center at Nariman House as well as the Aberoi Trident Hotel. They also incorrectly believed that the Taj Palace and towers had been cleared of attackers, and soldiers were leading hostages and hold up guests to safety, and removing bodies of those killed in the attacks. However, later news reports indicated that there were still two or three attackers in the Taj, with explosions heard and gunfire exchanged. Fires were also reported at the ground floor of the Taj with plumes of smoke arising from the first floor. The final operation at the Taj Palace Hotel was completed by the NSG commandos at 8 o'clock on 29 November, killing three attackers and resulting in the conclusion of the attacks. 
The NSG rescued 250 people from the Aberoi, 300 from the Taj and 60 people members of 12 different families from Nariman House. In addition, police seized a boat filled with arms and explosives anchored at Mazgaon Dock off Mumbai Harbour. Attribution The Mumbai attacks were planned and directed by Lashkar-e-Taiba militants inside Pakistan, and carried out by ten young armed men trained and sent to Mumbai and directed from inside Pakistan via mobile phones and VoIP. In July 2009 Pakistani authorities confirmed that Let plotted and financed the attacks from Let camps in Karachi and Thatta. In November 2009, Pakistani authorities charged seven men they had arrested earlier of planning and executing the assault. Mumbai Police Department originally identified 37 suspects including two army officers for their alleged involvement in the plot. All but two of the suspects, many of whom are identified only through aliases, are Pakistani. Two more suspects arrested in the United States in October 2009 for other attacks were also found to have been involved in planning the Mumbai attacks. One of these men, Pakistani-American David Headley born Daud Sayed Galani, was found to have made several trips to India before the attacks and gathered video and GPS information on behalf of the plotters. In April 2011, the United States issued arrest warrants for four Pakistani men as suspects in the attack. The men, Sajid Mir, Abu Kahafa, Mazar Iqbal alias, Major Iqbal, are believed to be members of Lashkar-e-Taiba and helped plan and train the attackers. Negotiations with Pakistan Pakistan initially denied that Pakistanis were responsible for the attacks, blaming plotters in Bangladesh and Indian criminals, a claim refuted by India, and saying they needed information from India on other bombings first. Pakistani authorities finally agreed that Ajmal Kassab was a Pakistani on the 7th of January 2009 and registered a case against three other Pakistani nationals. The Indian government supplied evidence to Pakistan and other governments, in the form of interrogations, weapons, and call records of conversations during the attacks. In addition, Indian government officials said that the attacks were so sophisticated that they must have had official backing from Pakistani agencies. An accusation denied by Pakistan. Under US and UN pressure, Pakistan arrested a few members of Jamaat ud Dawa and briefly put its founder under house arrest, but he was found to be free a few days later. A year after the attacks, Mumbai police continued to complain that Pakistani authorities were not co operating by providing information for their investigation. Meanwhile, journalists in Pakistan said security agencies were preventing them from interviewing people from Kassab's village. Home Minister P. Chidambaram said the Pakistani authorities had not shared any information about American suspects Headley and Rana, but that the FBI had been more forthcoming. An Indian report, summarizing intelligence gained from India's interrogation of David Headley, was released in October 2010. It alleged that Pakistan's intelligence agency had provided support for the attacks by providing funding for reconnaissance missions in Mumbai. The report included Headley's claim that Lashkar-e-Taiba's chief military commander, zaki ur rahman Lakhvi, had close ties to the ISI. He alleged that, "...every big action of Let is done in close coordination with the ISI." In 2018, during an interview with newspaper Don, Pakistan's ex-Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif reportedly indirectly accepted Pakistan's involvement in not preventing the Mumbai attacks. Topic. Investigation According to investigations, the attackers travelled by sea from Karachi, Pakistan, across the Arabian Sea, hijacked the Indian fishing trawler, Kuber, killed the crew of four, then forced the captain to sail to Mumbai. After murdering the captain, the attackers entered Mumbai on a rubber dinghy. The captain of Kuber, Amar Singh Solanki, had earlier been imprisoned for six months in a Pakistani jail for illegally fishing in Pakistani waters. The attackers stayed and were trained by the lashkar e taiba in a safe house at Azizabad near Karachi before boarding a small boat for Mumbai. David Headley was a member of lashkar e taiba and between 2002 and 2009 Headley travelled extensively as part of his work for Let. 
Headley received training in small arms and counter surveillance from Let, built a network of connections for the group, and was chief scout in scoping out targets for Mumbai attack, having allegedly been given $25,000 in cash in 2006 by an ISI officer known as Major Iqbal. The officer also helped him arrange a communications system for the attack, and oversaw a model of the Taj Hotel so that gunmen could know their way inside the target, according to Headley's testimony to Indian authorities. Headley also helped ISI recruit Indian agents to monitor Indian troop levels and movements, according to a U.S. official. At the same time, Headley was also an informant for the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, and Headley's wives warned American officials of Headley's involvement with Lett and his plotting attacks, warning specifically that the Taj Hotel may be their target. U.S. officials believed that the Inter Services Intelligence (ISI) officers provided support to Lashkar-e-Taiba militants who carried out the attacks. Disclosures made by former American intelligence contractor Edward Snowden in 2013 revealed that the Central Intelligence Agency CIA had intercepted communications between the Lashkar boat and the Let headquarters in Azad Kashmir and passed the alert on to RAW on November 18, eight days before the terrorists actually struck Mumbai. The arrest of Zabiuddin Ansari alias Abu Hamza in June 2012 provided further clarity on how the plot was hatched. According to Abu Hamza, the attacks were previously scheduled for 2006, using Indian youth for the job. However, a huge cache of AK-47s and RDX, which were to be used for the attacks, was recovered from Aurangabad in 2006, thus leading to the dismantling of the original plot. Subsequently, Abu Hamza fled to Pakistan and along with Lashkar commanders, scouted for Pakistani youth to be used for the attacks. In September 2007, 10 people were selected for the mission. In September 2008, these people tried sailing to Mumbai from Karachi, but couldn't complete their mission due to choppy waters. These men made a second attempt in November 2008, and successfully managed to execute the final attacks. David Headley's disclosures, that three Pakistani army officers were associated with the planning and execution of the attack were substantiated by Ansari's revelations during his interrogation. After Ansari's arrest, Pakistan's foreign office claimed they had received information that up to 40 Indian nationals were involved in the attacks. Method The attackers had planned the attack several months ahead of time and knew some areas well enough to vanish and reappear after security forces had left. Several sources have quoted Kassab telling the police that the group received help from Mumbai residents. The attackers used at least three SIM cards purchased on the Indian side of the border with Bangladesh. There were also reports of a SIM card purchased in the U.S. state New Jersey. If this is the case, then this would go back to Iraqi intelligence services and Al-Qaeda from 9-11 or Jema Ismailia and Egyptian Islamic Jihad through Iraqi intelligence from Saddam Hussein's old network of militants that was never proved. Police had also mentioned that Fahim Ansari, an Indian Lashkar operative who had been arrested in February 2008, had scouted the Mumbai targets for the November attacks. Later, the police arrested two Indian suspects, Mikhtar Ahmad, who is from Srinagar in Kashmir, and Tausuf Rahman, a resident of Kolkata. They supplied the SIM cards, one in Calcutta, and the other in New Delhi. The attackers used a satellite phone and cell phones to talk to each other as well as their handlers that were based in Pakistan. In transcripts intercepted by Indian authorities between the attackers and their handlers, the handlers provided the attackers with encouragement, tactical advice, and information gained from media coverage. The attackers used both personal cell phones and those obtained from their victims to communicate with each other and the news media. Although the attackers were encouraged to murder hostages, the attackers were in communication with the news media via cell phones to make demands in return for the release of hostages. This was believed to be done in order to further confuse Indian authorities that they were dealing with primarily a hostage situation. Type 86 grenades made by China's state owned Narinko were used in the attacks. There were also indications that the attackers had been taking steroids. The gunmen who survived said that the attackers had used Google Earth to familiarize themselves with the locations of buildings used in the attacks. There were ten gunmen, nine of whom were subsequently shot dead and one captured by security forces. Witnesses reported that they seemed to be in their early 20s, wore black t-shirts and jeans, and that they smiled and looked happy as they shot their victims. It was initially reported that some of the attackers were British citizens, but the Indian government later stated that there was no evidence to confirm this. 
Similarly, early reports of 12 gunmen were also later shown to be incorrect. On the 9th of December, the 10 attackers were identified by Mumbai police along with their hometowns in Pakistan: Ajmal Amir from Faridkot, Abu Ismail Dara Ismail Khan from Dara Ismail Khan, Hafiz Arshad and Babr Imran from Multan, Javed from Okara, Shoaib from Sialkot, Nazir Ahmed and Nasir from Faisalabad, Abdul Rahman from Arifwala, and Fahadullah from Dipalpur Taluka. Dara Ismail Khan is in the northwest frontier province. The rest of the towns are in Pakistani Punjab. On the 6th of April 2010, the Home Minister of Maharashtra State, which includes Mumbai, informed the assembly that the bodies of the nine killed Pakistani gunmen from the 2008 attack on Mumbai were buried in a secret location in January 2010. The bodies had been in the mortuary of a Mumbai hospital after Muslim clerics in the city refused to let them be buried on their grounds. Attackers Only one of the ten attackers, Ajmal Kassab, survived the attack. He was hanged in Yerwada jail in 2012. The other nine attackers killed during the onslaught were Hafiz Arshad alias Abdul Rahman Bada, Abdul Rahman Chota, Javed alias Abu Ali, Fahadullah alias Abu Fahad, Ismail Khan alias Abu Ismail, Babar Imran alias Abu Akasha, Nasir alias Abu Umar, Nazir alias Abu Umar and Shoaib alias Abu Soheb. According to scholar Saraj Kumar Rath, three local Indians, Bashir, Sabahuddin Ahmed and Fahim Ansari, helped the attackers in carrying out the Mumbai attacks. David Headley was supported by Bashir, who arranged the travel documents for him. Topic arrests Ajmal Kassab was the only attacker arrested alive by police. Much of the information about the attacker's preparation, travel, and movements comes from his confessions to the Mumbai police. On the 12th of February 2009, Pakistan's Interior Minister Rahman Malik said that Pakistani national Javed Iqbal, who acquired VoIP phones in Spain for the Mumbai attackers, and Hamid Amin Sadiq, who had facilitated money transfer for the attack, had been arrested. Two other men, known as Khan and Riaz, but whose full names were not given, were also arrested. Two Pakistanis were arrested in Brescia, Italy, east of Milan, on the 21st of November 2009, after being accused of providing logistical support to the attacks and transferring more than $200 to internet accounts using a false ID. They had red corner notices issued against them by Interpol for their suspected involvement, and it was issued after the last year's strikes. In October 2009, two Chicago men were arrested and charged by the FBI for involvement in terrorism abroad David Coleman Headley and Tahawar Hussain Rana. Headley, a Pakistani American, was charged in November 2009 with scouting locations for the 2008 Mumbai attacks. Headley is reported to have posed as an American Jew and is believed to have links with militant Islamist groups based in Bangladesh. On 18 March 2010, Headley pleaded guilty to a dozen charges against him thereby avoiding going to trial. In December 2009, the FBI charged Abdur Rahman Hashem Syed, a retired major in the Pakistani army, for planning the attacks in association with Headley. On the 15th of January 2010, in a successful snatch operation, RNAW agents nabbed Sheikh Abdul Khwaja, one of the handlers of the 2611th attacks, chief of Huji India operations, and a most wanted suspect in India from Colombo, Sri Lanka, and brought him over to Hyderabad, India, for formal arrest. On the 25th of June 2012, the Delhi Police Department arrested Zabiuddin Ansari alias Abu Hamza, one of the key suspects in the attack at the Indira Gandhi International Airport in New Delhi. His arrest was touted as the most significant development in the case since Kassab's arrest. Security agencies had been chasing him for three years in Delhi. Ansari is a Lashkar e Taiba Ultra and the Hindi tutor of the ten attackers who were responsible for the Mumbai attacks in 2008. He was apprehended, after he was arrested and deported to India by Saudi intelligence officials as per official request by Indian authorities. After Ansari's arrest, investigations revealed that in 2009 he allegedly stayed for a day in a room in old legislators' hostel, belonging to Fazia Khan, a former MLA and minister in Maharashtra government. The minister, however, denied having any links with him. Home Minister P. Chidambaram, asserted that Ansari was provided a safe place in Pakistan and was present in the control room, which could not have been established without active state support. 
Ansari's interrogation further revealed that Sajid Mir and a Pakistani army major visited India under fake names as cricket spectators to survey targets in Delhi and Mumbai for about a fortnight. A number of suspects were also arrested on false charges. At least two of them spent nearly eight years in prison and were not paid any compensation by the Indian government. Topic: <laughs> Casualties and compensation. At least 174 people, including civilians, security personnel and nine of the attackers, were killed in the attacks. Among the dead were 26 foreign nationals. One attacker was captured. The bodies of many of the dead hostages showed signs of torture or disfigurement. A number of those killed were notable figures in business, media, and security services. According to the then Maharashtra Chief Minister Vilasrao Deshmukh, 15 policemen and two NSG commandos were killed, including the following officers Assistant Police Sub Inspector Tukaram Ambal, who succeeded in capturing a terrorist alive, with his bare hands. Joint Commissioner of Police Hemant Karkari, the chief of the Mumbai Anti Terrorism Squad. Additional Commissioner of Police, Ashok Kamti Encounter Specialist Senior Inspector Vijay Salaskar Senior Inspector Shashank Shind NSG Commando, Major Sandeep Unakrishnan NSG Commando, Hawaldar Gajendra Singh Three railway officials of Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus had also been killed in the terror strikes. The casualties occurred in the following locations. The government of Maharashtra announced about 500,000 rupees $7,000 as compensation to the kin of each of those killed in the terror attacks and about 50,000 rupees $700 to the seriously injured. In August 2009, Indian Hotels Company and the Oberoi Group received about $28 million USD as part payment of the insurance claims, on account of the attacks on Taj and Trident, from General Insurance Corporation of India. Aftermath The attacks are sometimes referred to in India as 26 11ths after the date in 2008 that the attacks began, in similar style to the 9 11 attacks in the United States, the 11 M attack in Madrid, Spain, and the 7 7 bombings in London, United Kingdom. The Pratan Inquiry Commission, appointed by the Maharashtra government, produced a report that was tabled before the Legislative Assembly more than a year after the events. The report said the warlike attack was beyond the capacity to respond of any police force, but also found fault with the Mumbai Police Commissioner Hassan Ghaffour's lack of leadership during the crisis. The Maharashtra government planned to buy 36 speed boats to patrol the coastal areas and several helicopters for the same purpose. It also planned to create an anti-terror force called Force One and upgrade all the weapons that Mumbai police currently have. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh on an all-party conference declared that legal framework would be strengthened in the battle against terrorism and a federal anti-terrorist intelligence and investigation agency, like the FBI, will be set up soon to coordinate action against terrorism. The government strengthened anti-terror laws with UAPA 2008, and the Federal National Investigation Agency was formed. The attacks further strained India's slowly recovering relationship with Pakistan. India's then External Affairs Minister Pranab Mukherjee ex-president of India declared that India may indulge in military strikes against terror camps in Pakistan to protect its territorial integrity. There were also after effects on the United States's relationships with both countries, the U.S. led NATO war in Afghanistan, and on the global war on terror. FBI Chief Robert Mueller praised the unprecedented cooperation between American and Indian intelligence agencies over the Mumbai terror attack probe. However, Interpol Secretary General Ronald Noble said that Indian intelligence agencies did not share any information with Interpol. A new National Counter Terrorism Center (NCTC) was proposed to be set up by the then Home Minister P. Chidambaram as an office to collect, collate, summarize, integrate, analyze, coordinate, and report all information and inputs received from various intelligence agencies, state police departments, and other ministries and their departments. Topic. Movement of troops 
Pakistan moved troops towards the border with India voicing concerns about the Indian government's possible plans to launch attacks on Pakistani soil if it did not cooperate. After days of talks, the Pakistan government, however, decided to start moving troops away from the border. Reactions Indians criticized their political leaders after the attacks, saying that their ineptness was partly responsible. The Times of India commented on its front page that, "...our politicians fiddle as innocents die." Political reactions in Mumbai and India included a range of resignations and political changes, including the resignations of Minister for Home Affairs Shivraj Padal, Chief Minister Vilasrao Deshmukh and Deputy Chief Minister R. R. Padal for controversial reactions to the attack including taking the former's son and Bollywood director Ram Gopal Verma to tour the damaged Taj Hotel and the latter's remarks that the attacks were not a big deal in such a large city. Prominent Muslim personalities such as Bollywood actor Amir Khan appealed to their community members in the country to observe Eid al-Adha as a day of mourning on 9 December. The business establishment also reacted, with changes to transport, and requests for an increase in self-defense capabilities. The attacks also triggered a chain of citizens' movements across India such as the India Today Group's War Against Terror campaign. There were vigils held across all of India with candles and placards commemorating the victims of the attacks. The NSG commandos based in Delhi also met criticism for taking 10 hours to reach the three sites under attack. International reaction for the attacks was widespread, with many countries and international organizations condemning the attacks and expressing their condolences to the civilian victims. Many important personalities around the world also condemned the attacks. Media coverage highlighted the use of social media and internet social networking tools, including Twitter and Flickr, in spreading information about the attacks. In addition, many Indian bloggers offered live textual coverage of the attacks. A map of the attacks was set up by a web journalist using Google Maps. The New York Times, in July 2009, described the event as what may be the most well-documented terrorist attack anywhere. In November 2010, families of American victims of the attacks filed a lawsuit in Brooklyn, New York, naming Lt. Gen. Ahmed Shuja Pasha, chief of the ISI, as being complicit in the Mumbai attacks. On the 22nd of September 2011, the attack on the American embassy in Afghanistan was attributed to Pakistan via cell phone records identical to the attacks in Mumbai, also linked to Pakistan. Trials Kassab's trial Kassab's trial was delayed due to legal issues, as many Indian lawyers were unwilling to represent him. A Mumbai Bar Association passed a resolution proclaiming that none of its members would represent Kassab. However, the Chief Justice of India stated that Kassab needed a lawyer for a fair trial. A lawyer for Kassab was eventually found, but was replaced due to a conflict of interest. On 25 February 2009, Indian investigators filed an 11,000-page charge sheet, formally charging Kassab with murder, conspiracy, and waging war against India among other charges. Kassab's trial began on 6 May 2009. He initially pleaded not guilty, but later admitted his guilt on 20 July 2009. He initially apologized for the attacks and claimed that he deserved the death penalty for his crimes, but later retracted these claims, saying that he had been tortured by police to force his confession, and that he had been arrested while roaming the beach. The court had accepted his plea, but due to the lack of completeness within his admittance, the judge had deemed that many of the 86 charges were not addressed and therefore the trial continued. Kassab was convicted of all 86 charges on 3 May 2010. He was found guilty of murder for directly killing seven people, conspiracy to commit murder for the deaths of the 164 people killed in the three-day terror siege, waging war against India, causing terror, and of conspiracy to murder two high-ranking police officers. On 6 May 2010, he was sentenced to death by hanging. However, he appealed his sentence at High Court. On 21 February 2011, the Bombay High Court upheld the death sentence of Kassab, dismissing his appeal. On 29 August 2012, the Indian Supreme Court upheld the death sentence for Kassab. 
The court stated, we are left with no option but to award death penalty. The primary and foremost offence committed by Kassab is waging war against the government of India. The verdict followed ten weeks of appeal hearings, and was decided by a two-judge Supreme Court panel, which was led by Judge Aftab Alam. The panel rejected arguments that Kassab was denied a free and fair trial. Kassab filed a mercy petition with the President of India, which was rejected on 5 November. Kassab was hanged in Pune's Yerwada jail in secret on 21 November 2012 at 7.30 am and naming the operation as Operation X. The Indian mission in Islamabad informed the Pakistan government about Kassab's hanging through letter. Pakistan refused to take the letter, which was then faxed to them. His family in Pakistan was sent news of his hanging via a courier. In Pakistan Indian and Pakistani police exchanged DNA evidence, photographs and items found with the attackers to piece together a detailed portrait of the Mumbai plot. Police in Pakistan arrested seven people, including Hamad Amin Sadiq, a homeopathic pharmacist, who arranged bank accounts and secured supplies. Sadiq and six others began their formal trial on 3 October 2009 in Pakistan. Indian authorities said the prosecution stopped well short of top Lashkar leaders. In November 2009, Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh said that Pakistan had not done enough to bring the perpetrators of the attacks to justice. An eight member commission comprising defence lawyers, prosecutors, and a court official was allowed to travel to India on 15 March 2013 to gather evidence for the prosecution of seven suspects linked to the 2008 Mumbai attacks. However, the defence lawyers were barred from cross examining the four prosecution witnesses in the case, including Ajmal Kassab. On the eve of the first anniversary of 26 11s, a Pakistani anti terror court formally charged seven accused, including Let Operations Commander Zaki ur Rahman Lakhvi. However, the actual trial started on 5 May 2012. The Pakistani court conducting trial of Mumbai attacks accused reserved its judgment on the application filed by Lakhvi, challenging the report of the judicial panel, to 17 July 2012. On 17 July 2012, the court refused to take the findings of the Pakistani Judicial Commission as part of the evidence. However, it ruled that if a new agreement, which allows the panel's examination of witnesses, is reached, the prosecution may make an application for sending the panel to Mumbai. The Indian government, upset over the court ruling, however, contended that evidence collected by the Pakistani Judicial Panel has evidential value to punish all those involved in the attack. On 21 September 2013, a Pakistani Judicial Commission arrived in India to carry out the investigation and to cross-examine the witnesses. This is the second such visit. The one in March 2012 was not a success as its report was rejected by an anti-terrorism court in Pakistan due to lack of evidence. In the United States The lead operative David Headley born Dawood Syed Galani in his testimony before a Chicago federal court during co-accused Tahawar Rana's trial revealed that Mumbai Habad House was added to the list of targets for surveillance given by his inter-services intelligence handler Major Iqbal, though the Abaroy Hotel, one of the sites attacked, was not originally on the list. On 10 June 2011, Tahawar Rana was acquitted of plotting the 2008 Mumbai attacks, but was held guilty on two other charges. He was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison on the 17th of January 2013. David Headley pleaded guilty to 12 counts related to the attacks, including conspiracy to commit murder in India and aiding and abetting in the murder of six Americans. On the 23rd of January 2013, he was sentenced to 35 years in federal prison. His plea that he not be extradited to India, Pakistan, or Denmark was accepted. Memorials On the first anniversary of the event, the state paid homage to the victims of the attack. Force One—a new security force created by the Maharashtra government—staged a parade from Nariman Point to Chowpati. Other memorials and candlelight vigils were also organized at the various locations where the attacks occurred. On the second anniversary of the event, homage was again paid to the victims. 
On the 10th anniversary of the 2611th Mumbai terror attacks, Nariman House, one of the several establishments that were targeted by the lashkar e taiba terrorists, will be declared a memorial and rechristened as Nariman Light. Topic: <laughs> Published accounts. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Documentaries. Operation Black Tornado 2018 is a TV documentary which premiered on Veer by Discovery Channel series Battle Ops. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Films, movies. Hotel Mumbai 2018 is an American-Australian thriller film directed by Anthony Maras and written by John Colley and Maras. It has come under criticism for omitting any reference to the role of Pakistan in the terror strikes. The Attacks of 26 11 2013 is an Indian crime film directed by Ram Gopal Varma, based on the 2008 Mumbai attacks. Terror in Mumbai 2009, The Inside Story of the November 2008 Terrorist Attack on Mumbai, India. It features exclusive never-before-heard audio tapes of the intercepted phone calls between the young gunmen and their controllers in Pakistan, and testimony from the sole surviving gunman. Mumbai Siege, Four Days of Terror 2018 features situation of some foreigners inside Taj Hotel. Books The Siege, The Attack on the Taj is a non-fiction book by Kathy Scott Clerk and Adrian Levy. It is an account of the 2008 attacks on the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel in Mumbai, India, during the night of 26 November 2008. The book was first published by Penguin Books in 2013. See also 1993 Bombay bombings 2006 Mumbai train bombings November 2015 Paris attacks List of Islamist terrorist attacks Survivor registry The attacks of 26 11 Westgate Center shootings The siege, the attack on the Taj Phantom 2015 film Sarah Avraham Notes <laughs>